Thanks a lot, you're here this morning, 125 already. Okay then, seeing you're all here, it's in the truck, Davy. Put the truck and out home in his office in South of North Lancashire, where it's overcast and it's 15 degrees. Forecast for it to get better. Anyway, that's the weather forecast for South of North Lancashire. If you want to know what the weather's like where you are, look at your own bloody Monday. All right, let's get started. Madam Director, can you put that light on for me, please? No problem. Thank you. Right, Monday started with one major theme in the rags. Summer of discontent. Real strikes to cripple economy over this week. Also, teachers and doctors to consider joining others in strike action. Now, the cost of living crisis is getting out of hand. Workers' rights across the, uh, workers rights across the board are also suffering. Um, a, and pay stagnation or a pay, pay cuts are basically being offered to people because of out-of-hand inflation, all right? Now, the public sector will lead the charge in the disputes across the UK. Public sector pay has been more or less um, stagnant since the Tories came to power. Public sector workers are struggling to get by. Expect disruption right across the public sector or through the summer and maybe into the winter, OK? Right, moving on. Monday, in relation to the strikes that are coming down the line, the criminal cabal in Westminster considered changing employment law to allow agency staff to be hired to cover or stand in for striking public sector workers. I can't see how that will work. You can't um, just have a pull people off the street and get them to drive trains. You can't have refuge collectors operating heavy machinery without being trained. You can't have uh, um, agency workers dragged in off the street to do social worker jobs teachers' jobs, doctors' jobs, so on and so forth. This change in the law is nothing to do with the strikes. This is to allow the, the private sector to dispose of their workforce more easily. That's all that is. This is more or less legalising hire and refire. OK, right, moving on. Monday, here in Scotland, and the Minister for, for the Circular Economy announces to the Scottish Parliament a moratorium. Hold on. A moratorium on the construction of new waste incinerators. The move comes prior to the ban in new landfill sites in 2025. Six incinerators are currently operating in Scotland. Eleven more have planning permission and will be built. The moratorium will work in the same way as the fracking moratorium and the new court moratorium, with councils being instructed not to gain a uh, to grant planning permission for the new incinerator plants. Ms. Slater said the move was in line with the Scottish government's plans to move to a circular economy and to help meet Scotland's net zero plans by 2045. Okay, now, um, Scotland's got a big problem with waste disposal, especially at this point in time. If I walk out into that hill, I'll, there is no doubt that our night some bugger's been doing their tip, fly tipping and the water board will need to pipe to get it sure to do it because the water plant's down there. So, there is a big problem with waste. The um, the ban on further landfill sites opening up in 2025 is going to exasperate the system. Now, what Lorna Slater wants is that we recycle more and we use materials more and keep materials longer in what they call the circular economy. Um, the incinerator sites that we built will be used to heat local housing and things like that. But as I say, there's a cap going on that as well because when you burn stuff, you get emissions. All right, let's move on. Right, Monday. And that the Scottish Affairs Committee in Westminster, the House of Thieves and Carpet Baggers, Tory Secretary of State for Scotland tells MPs that the SNP don't have a mandate to hold a second independence referendum. Asked what would be a mandate, Alistair Union Jack dodged answering the questions. Jack said the people don't want a referendum for at least three years, according to the polls and according to Jack. All right, dear De Brock MP was also told to shut up and get back in her box when speaking about devolved uh, uh, devolution being bypassed. Um, well, she didn't take it very well, to be, to be fair to her. Anyway, just to uh, make matters worse, Alistair Union Jack then tells uh, um, the Scottish MPs to get on board with the Westminster plans. That includes plans which was being laid out to introduce um, English, uh, a, a bill in England which will force um, reforms to Scottish farming, 
further hampering exports to the EU. So basically because of the internal market bill, whatever they introduce in England, we're going to have the bloody BLD up here. And it will lower our food standards, meaning that nobody will want to buy the bloody stuff. Alright, so Alistair Jack, didn't he cover himself in bloody glory yesterday? Denied democracy. Tell the Scottish MPs to shut up and get back in their boxes and tell them to get on board with Westminster's plans or else. That's dictatorship, folks. That's what that is. Now, there's a reason why David's left a wee blank there and a big blank there in this new iPad because he's got the rest of that committee's uh, um, shenanigans to fill out for the journal. But we'll leave it at that the new Just... Get it clear. What the Tories intend to do with Scotland and the Scottish Parliament is what they're doing with everything else doing that road. And that's bloody well ignore it and hope it goes away. And that includes the train driver strike, Brexit, the Rwandan policy, breaking international law. They just hope it'll all go away and everything will work itself out. Everybody else is going to clean their shite up. <coughs> well, that referendum will go ahead. Arthur Jack's in for a bloody awakening and so is that shower of shite down that road. Right, moving on, Monday, here in Scotland, and the Minister, eh, um, eh, and Ministers receive five bids to build green ports in Scotland. Now, the bids come from Clyde Greenport, Aberdeen City and Peterhead Freeport, Opportunities Inverness and Cromarty, uh, Orkney Greenport, and there's one in the borders as well, all right? That's the Stranari area. All right, anyway, two of the bids will be, gra will, will be granted. Um, a, and Holyrood Finance Minister Kate Forbes says the Scottish Government expects selected sites for free ports, green free ports in this case, um, to deliver high skilled jobs and be in line with the Scotland's drive to net zero. The green free ports will have special tax regimes offering companies operating in the ports um, tax exemptions. Free ports have been done before, folks, and have never bloody well worked. Failed experiment. But, you know, the Tories are just rehashing all the crap that Thatcher did. You know, selling off council houses again. You know, free ports. Um, a free market economy. Undermining the labour markets. Undermining the law. Like I said, I have to say, Thatcher wasn't quite um, as big on breaking the law. She did try to break um, a treaty with the EU, but it worked itself out. Right, anyway... So there you go, free ports. That's, that's, that's the economic answer. Free ports, in other words, take more money out of the exchequer, less for public services, and of course what we know about free ports is places like Glasgow City will lose out because work will move from Glasgow City into the free port, green port area where there'll be tax exemptions for the companies to operate. So they don't create employment, they just move it from one area to another. Right, right moving on, Monday... And doctors a eh, warn that care shortages could overwhelm the NHS. Home care and care staff and um, care homes are stretched to the limit, apparently. Right, now this leads to something called bed blocking, folks, which isn't great. That lowers capacity in the NHS. Now, we already know 740 odd beds are being taken up with COVID patients at the moment. You compound that, we know we ought to send people back to their homes for their care and community or back to. Um, care homes uh, for care, then you're going to have a big backlog in the NHS and that's what doctors are talking about, that's where the pro uh, pressure points are coming. Now the Scottish Government says they're making record investment in social care, but building of the new care uh, service Scotland will take time. Go and remember folks, people who do home help and things like that, they are so badly paid and it's such hard work, it's, it's more um, a vocation than a job. Getting people to get into these positions is very difficult. That's why with a lot of Eastern Europeans doing that sort of work, they seem to have um, an aptitude for it more than Bahrain people do. Okay, right, moving on. And Scottish Environmental Protection Agency um, he issues water warning, water a, um, warnings and the Scottish borders. SEPA uh, moved the borders on to level three of the water, uh, um, the water scarcity warnings uh, scale. There are six levels of alert. The borders Aberdeenshire, Angus Five are now on uh, on on are out. Uh, uh, try this again. Now all on level three alert, which is actually called alert. It starts at normal. It goes to dodgy alert, 
sufficient problems, real problems, and no data because it's that bad they can't compile it. So that's the six levels. Anyway, all the way down the east coast of Scotland, they're on level three apparently. So there you have it. They're telling companies who draw water from the from rivers and things like that um, to cut it back. All right, and they, they might be thinking about hose ban in the, in the borders. There you go. Right, moving on. Scotland been on off water. Christ, it doesn't stop bloody raining. What are they talking about? I, sometimes I think they make us push up. You know that. Right, moving on. Monday, and it's reported that the the 386 uh, drug driving cases to be um, abandoned. Um, now, the problem seems to be that the forensic labs are struggling to cope with the amount of people being tested for drugs. The Scottish Police Authority planned to process a thousand blood tests per year, per year from those who'd been squawked for drugs, but demand for, for uh, the test has doubled. There are many people getting out there heat and getting behind the wheel. The, uh, um, they just don't have the capacity. Now, the 386 cases dropped were dropped um, uh, because tests hadn't been conducted and they allotted a statutory 12 month period. The Scottish Government is investing a million pounds to increase capacity within the Scottish Police Authority and it's also allowing some outsourcing to approved private labs. Scottish uh, Police Authority Chairman Martin Evans said that 7% of uh, drug tested uh, drivers cases were trapped. Okay. Right, moving on, Monday, BBC Pravda in Scotland continues to try and make a mountain out of a molehill um, over the Patrick Grady story. Amy Callaghan apologies, apologises for encouraging SNP colleagues to support Mr Brady when he was accused of sexual misconduct. This comes in light of a recording of the meeting which has to, it's fallen into the hands of the Daily Mail, all right? Mr Grady... Um, he propositioned the junior member of staff. The UK Parliamentary Standards Committee found Mr Grady had broken standards and he was suspended from the Parliament for two days. He was also suspended from the uh, SNP Parliamentary Group for two weeks. Uh, no, sorry, one week. Anyway, meanwhile, while there's a mountain out of hope, might well be made out of this misconduct thing where he propositioned some junior member of staff. Um, he, the, um, he, Tory MPs have quit after conviction for paedophilia, another quit for a watching porn in the Parliament. This has led to two by-elections in Wakefield and Tiverton, and the Tory MP for Romford has been told to stay away from the parliamentary um, estate while being investigated for rape. It's funny how Mr Grady propositioned a 19-year-old is bigger news than rape, watching porn, and a Tory MP having to quit because he was done for paedophilia. Unbelievable how the wet press works here, isn't it? Right, moving on. Monday, and Public Health Scotland published a report saying alcohol deaths five times more prevalent in poor parts of Scottish society. Davies says, tell us something we don't bloody well know. When you're living in abject poverty, people tend to self-medicate to escape reality. That's why in the poorest and most deprived parts of Scotland you have raging alcoholism and drugs. That's just the facts of it. Now, we didn't need Public Health Scotland to tell us this, but I suppose the report is handy for directing resources into these areas to try and help alleviate the situation with alcohol and drugs because people's lives are that bloody miserable that they're still self-medicating. Unbloody believable. Right, moving on. Monday, down that road, um, in the House of Thieves and Carpetbaggers, Labour Shadow Secretary... Um, a Shadow Foreign Secretary, David Lammy, um, a, the democracy denier who says that Scotland will never get a referendum under Labour's watch, um, is under investigation by the Standards Committee for failing to update the Register of Members' Interests in a timely manner. Lammy joins his boss, Sir Comrade Starmer, who has also been investigated for the same thing. Mr Lammy blamed his staff, saying administrative error. Mr Lamy said he's now put new systems in place. You know, see, you get right into it. When you look at the, uh, the two cheeks of the establishment arse down there in the House of Thieves and Carpetbaggers, they're as bent as a nine bob No, There's Starmer and Lamy, no declaring outside earnings. Wow. Also down that road, Transport Minister Grant Sharp tells the Commons that the real strikes were the trade union's fault and that the public uh, uh, won't be hoodwinked, whatever the hell that means. Nope, Mr Sharp, 
The strikes are the results of the disastrous economic policies carried out by the Westminster government, leading to stagnating wages over the 10, 12 years that you have been in bloody power. And now we've got rampant gallop in inflation, meaning that anything less than an 11% pay rise is a pay cut. How you can blame the trade unions for the situation created by the government, I have no bloody idea, but it appears that the idiot Grant Chart has a brass neck to have a go at it. Right, moving on. Monday, and the conflict in the Ukraine continues. Putin's push in the Donbass region, the Donbass region continues. Progress is slow, and when I say slow, I mean metres per day. Right, now it's been reported that Russian troops are running low on ammunition. Don't know if that's the truth. But hey oh, you can't fight if you have no bullets in your gun. That's a good thing. Um, Putin's troops are eh, advancing, but as I say, we're talking metres per day. The Ukrainians are putting up a plucky fight, but Putin wants the Donbass, he'll get it. Alright, so that's what I've got for these guys. I hope you found it entertaining, I hope you found it informative. Let's have a look and see what the rags have got to say this morning, shall we? Ah, let's see what the rags have got to say. <coughs> Scotland's papers. UK runs into buffers amid biggest rail strike. The Times has, Britain runs into the buffers. Rail strike today. 90% of Scott Rail services are down. And that's nothing to do with the Scottish Government or Scott Rail. You can put that squarely at the door of Westminster because it's network rail. All right. And uh, the Daily Express has, Boris, time for sensible pay deals to east cost of living crisis. The loony right wing war ag is right behind Bojo again. And the Scottish Daily Express says Mr Johnson has warned that the rail strikes risk harming the whole nation. He has called for sensible pay deals to ease the cost of uh, to co leave the cost of living crisis to the paper ads. Listen, let's get right down to this. When the rail network clogs up, then the whole of the economy suffers. That's the whole point of the strikes. You bring them to the bloody table when you bring them to their knees. Okay, the Daily Record has. End of the line as Tories block deal. Scotland enters weeks of real chaos as US government is accused of preventing an agreement being reached. So it appears the Tories are actually interfering in the negotiations to get the real strikes sorted out. Now the unions have said that the Tory ministers actively prevented a pay deal which would have prevented strike action according to the Daily Record. So there you go. They're actually preventing offers being made to these people. Right, the Daily Telegraph has PM. Unions harming those they are meant to help. Well, you know, there's something called solidarity. You know, if people can't get to the work because the, the, the trains are no moving, then they should take it as industrial action and stay at home. And uh, according to a report, seeing a GP remotely is greener, says NHS. Well, of course, as you don't even get out of bus or drive to the doctors, unless your surgery is within walking distance. Um, the Metro have... It's all going a bit local. Mayhem for commuters as real strike starts today. 11th hours talks fail as 3% pay increase rejected. 3% pay increase. Inflation's run at 11% and they're off on 3%. Mental. Right, anyway. Hey, it's all going a bit local. The Metro says, leading on the same story, it quotes National Union of Rails, Maritime and Transport Workers Chief Mick Lynch, as it says the strikes will run until we get a settlement and it's acceptable to our people. Right, the I has number 10 plans to tear up limits on city bosses' pay. There you go, pay cuts for everybody except for those in the city, yeah. In other news, the I leads with the report that Downing Street has asked ministers to ease restraints on top city pay to show overseas companies the benefits of Brexit. The paper says the move could provide controversy, uh, could prove controversial during the cost of living crisis. I am, Ian, I'm quite aware of what's going on in France, but I'm more interested in what's going on in this rock right now. Right, the Scottish Daily Mail has now sex pest MP triggers SNP civil war. MPs astonishing new turn and apologies to Savage's party for compliant failings. Second MP contained a uh, condemned significant problems. Victim set to take we acts, and this is the Patrick Grady story. All right, as I say, um, Amy Callahan apologised for offering support. At the time, the guy was accused and hadn't been found guilty of anything. And he propositioned a 19 year old staffer. No wise move, but not exactly what you would call um, sex pest. Mr. Grady's a single man. This is what we call bone stuff out of proportion. 
As to the, the person who was a proposition by Mr Grady, they're th now thinking about suing the SNP. I don't see that storming up in court because Mr Grady would have been acting as an individual and knows the whole party. Right, the Scotsman has. SNP faces legal threat from alleged harassment victim. Alleged harassment victim, isn't that interesting? And Ian Blackford has been urged to explain the SNP's handling of sexual harassment allegations as the victim at the centre of the party. Grady Rowe says he's considering legal action against the party, according to the Scotsman. I've just explained, Mr Grady was acting in a private capacity. He was propositioning somebody sexually. Nothing to do with the party. That won't fly. If he wants to sue, he's going to have to sue Mr Grady. Um, and apart from that, these researchers and staffers are all hired by individual MPs, know the party. Right, the Herald has staff accused of cheating colleagues to build and repair their own homes. And this is a story about the new Motherwell College. Apparently, lecturers and staff there were taking materials to repair their own houses. Uh, and this is in a sta this is in startling claims set out in a week's report. The paper says a whistleblower claims the project, described as being of a significant scale and known as the big job, was completed in 2013. That's when the new college opened. The National has suck it up. Tory Jacks put down to SNP MP Scottish Secretary's response has brought criticise the UK government for bypassing Holyrood. We spoke about that earlier. He basically tells Scottish MPs, doesn't matter what you say, we're going to do whatever we bloody well want, and we'll use the laws that we've created and put in place to do it. So as I say, the um, bill going through doing that road to relate its only to um, farming in England, England and Wales, but because of the internal market bill, we are going to have to follow suit. The Scottish government and the Scottish people have got no bloody say in it. Right, let's see what the stars got to say, because eh, um, the dragon's getting ready to go to work. Right, the Daily Star of Scotland, the worst strikes for 30 years plus chaos at our airports and now this. Don't panic, but they've just put another man with no brain in charge of the UK. The Daily Star of Scotland notes that it's the worst strikes for 30 years plus chaos at our airports and now this pointing out in a, a forthright terms that the Deputy Prime Minister Don McGrab is temporarily in charge of the country while Johnston recovers from a minor sinus operation. Well, you know, it's not as if he's any worse than Bojo. Let's face it, between the two of them, eh, they couldn't get a spark bright enough to start a candle, a spark bright enough to light a candle. In fact, they're a pair of dummies. Okay, right, that's what I've got for you today, folks. I hope you found it entertaining. I hope you found it enjoying. Let's go on to the normal stuff. Partisan politics in your pockets. Get your eyes on the prize. Learn your how you go on. He's got out there and win hearts and minds because the game is on. No matter what Alistair Union Jack and the dummies do in that road, I've got to see. Okay, now support independent broadcasting, uh, independent broadcasters and independent media. Support Broadcasting Scotland, Independence Live, Caledon Media, Indie Live Radio. You know, you know the people and independent vloggers and bloggers. And if they've got a crowdfund, they're gone. Then throw some money in the pot. As you know, David and I and, and our associates don't want your money. But if you like what we do, we'd like you to share it so our message gets out. Okay, now health messaging, folks. Covid's on the rise at the moment, so when you're out and about, be careful. Face coverings in closed public spaces, clean hands and surfaces regularly. If you've got your sniffles, mask up and think about social distancing. And if you're still testing, please submit your reports to the NHS Scotland so we can monitor how much of this is in the community. OK, now you guys have a lovely day. We'll be back tomorrow to do it all again. Have a nice day. Bye now.